Good evening, everyone. Hello. I know I'm late. Um, I was going to cancel this meeting because I had some internet issues. Um, but the good folks at Comcast decided to get their lives together. Um, we have a lot to discuss. We haven't had like a hardcore meeting in a while. But there's a lot to go through. Um, first off, I just want to go on record um, as everybody logs in as saying we are literally like people are doing literally everything that we yell at people for doing in these disaster movies. We are questioning science. We are questioning common sense. We are questioning humanity. Okay, first off, I want to say hello to everyone. Um, Teresa, what's going on? Richmond, Melanie from New Jersey. Hey, what's going on, Kelly? I love you too, Doc. Tiffany, Melly's here. So, everybody's starting to follow. Like I said, I know I'm late, but um, we got a lot to discuss. Um, and first, I want to say this. A lot of times, you can't expect to dance with the devil and not get burned. And I want to start off by saying that um, and, and dedicating that to uh, Dr. Burks, for those of you who, 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 who don't know. Um, Dr. Birch, she's been up with Dr. Fauci, um, working with the White House as far as dealing with the coronavirus epidemic. Um, the scarf lady, some of you have been calling her. Um, you can't dance with the devil and think you're not going to get burned, bitch. And I feel like, unlike Dr. Fauci, who is very... He is not going to sacrifice his medical rep uh, reputation to appease Donald Trump. And I'm not saying that Dr. Burks is necessarily doing that, but she's definitely caving under the pressure, in my opinion. Um, when she sidestepped that question about um, the California deaths and, and things like that, just the way that she's starting to do things and handle it, she looks stressed. Like, first off, sis looks tired as fuck. That last press conference, I was like, oh, she's really going through it. Like, she's really going through it. You can see that it is really starting to weigh on her. And I don't think the job, per se, is weighing on her. Hey, T. in New Orleans. I don't think that the job, per se, is weighing on her. Doing the data, the studying, and things like that. I think her... Dealing with this administration and having to do what they want her to do and say what she wants to say, say what they want her to say, it's starting to get to her. Her conscience is starting to weigh on her real heavy. I think as a nation, the only thing we can do is wish her the best and hope that she can find, you know, something inside to keep her same conviction. Because sis, when this is all said and done... His ass eventually, hopefully, if the country doesn't go to shit, will be gone. You will still have to answer for the decisions that you make and the statements that you make at this moment in time right now. So my appeal to Dr. Burks is just to keep it cute, sis. Keep it cute. It's okay if you get fired. The worst thing that can happen to you is you get fired. Everybody's been fired from this administration. It's like filing for unemployment. Nobody's going to look at your resume and say, oh, she got fired by the Trump administration. She must be a terrible person. Nobody's going to think that. But I don't want you to... I hope she does not sacrifice her good name and reputation for Donald Trump. And I just want to start off that way um, with that. Now, it's a number of things that... These protests. So, for those of you, 
you've been watching this, this uh, coming to these meetings, watching the show for a while, you know that I'm from Baltimore City, which is in the state of Maryland. The capital of the state of Maryland is Annapolis. And we had a uh, reopen the country protests, which is something that I thought, you know, I honestly thought people from Maryland had good sense. You know, we may be a lot of things. Baltimore City may be a lot of things. But one thing I always thought we had was good sense. Okay, and I never thought I would see today. Once again, we're doing exactly what we yell at people about doing in the disaster movies. I never thought I would see a day where we are protesting people wanting us to stay at home and not spread a fucking airborne virus plague, what have you. And then they go out to this pro. So check this out. So first off. It was the fucking peanut gallery, okay? Like, that that's the first thing, okay? It's the peanut gallery. I saw one video where a man got out of his car trying to crack slick, forgets to put the car in neutral or brake or whatever, put the brake on. The car starts sliding into the back of another car, hits this one man. God don't like ugly. No social distancing. Some of these people out here with masks and one of the um, reporters were like, these people are talking and it's clearly spit coming out of their mouth and they're not six feet apart. Like, who does that? Like, my thing is, and, and this is, I'm going to speak to America right now. My thing is, as Americans, we are like terrible. And I know it's not everybody, but I have to address the nation, okay? We are terrible. When I talk to my friends from other countries, and when I look at news from different parts of the world, and some of the hardships that people have to deal with, and the way that they have to deal with their governments, like, I've never seen people, and I know people want to get back to work, but I've never seen people contest science in a way, and it could be a conspiracy. We don't know. We don't know. It's all around the world at this point. Contest science that's trying to keep them from fucking dying. I've never seen that. Hey, Michael. I've never seen that in my life. Like, you're literally protesting somebody trying to keep you from dying. And the thing is, when you talk to people from New York, I, I think for some of us in the country, and when I look at some of these protests, because you don't see no protests happening where motherfuckers die, okay? I think in some of these parts of the country, because the death toll isn't where New York is or where Seattle is or Louisiana, because the death toll isn't high and they aren't feeling it, they aren't feeling it, they think, oh, this is like, why do we have to close? This is crazy. And I think that that's causing people to say and do things that are just irrational. Okay. Um, the hip hop community got a wake up call today. Rest in peace to Fred the Godson. He lost his battle with COVID-19. Um, he passed away, so I send my, my love and condolences to his loved ones. But I think because th with Americans, we don't believe it unless we see it. Um, and which is crazy to me. Which is crazy to me. Because for this to be the Christian country, the Christian society that is faith-based, keep the faith. And it's nothing wrong with that. But I find that these protests are happening in these some of these red states where they're like evangelical states. And it's so, you know, God and bare arms and all that. But you don't have faith in staying safe. You don't think God's going to take care of your economy or your money? You will be fine. You tell, you tell black people to keep the faith all the time and pray to God when police are shooting them in the street. All you got to do is stay home and you can't keep the faith. I'm preaching tonight. I didn't mean to preach, but I'm preaching tonight. And I hope if I offend somebody, it's not my intention. But 
I, I got to say some real shit right now. Okay? If we can keep the faith when people getting shot in the streets by police or getting killed for selling cigarettes, we can keep the faith and stay in the house to avoid, you know, spreading this plague. I've never seen a country, dear America, I've never seen a country where you have Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, television, food delivery in a lot of places. And that's not enough for you. In some places, they can't even afford the social distance. And then you're protesting for the dumbest fucking reasons and you're not even socially distanced at the fucking protest. At least some of these other countries, I, I believe it was Iran or I, 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 I gotta remember, I gotta, let me look up the country, but it was one of these countries where they were protesting and they were spread six feet apart. Now, some people came on the post and it was like, that's not effective with all those people because, you know, Americans are the authority on what's effective. Um, that's not effective because it's still a lot of people. But at least they tried. At least they are fucking paying attention and focusing. I don't, I don't understand that. Oh, you're taking away our rights. No, you know what's 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 taking away your rights? What it feels like to not have any rights? Live in China. Where they've been had tracking devices. If you even been in close quarters with somebody or even near somebody that was infected, okay, your ass automatically is on a mandatory quarantine for two weeks. Okay? That's not, that's, that's being harsh. Imagine having to come through the airport, check in, and it's cameras literally everywhere. Okay? I feel like Americans are very selfish. We are the only country, for the most part, who can't follow fucking directions. And I'm talking about the citizens. We can't follow directions. I don't want to hear no parent, no teacher, or no older person say anything to young people or students about you need to follow directions or you don't know how to follow directions because it's a lot of adults who just cannot follow directions. Bottom line. And flat out. Thank God for the mayors and governors of the country. Um, some of these states are reopening. Um, why? I, 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 I don't know. South Carolina's reopening. They reopened the beaches. and I, and, and Georgia's reopening hair salons. Like, nail salons, gyms, like, movie theaters. The most trivial places. And I understand that those are places of employment. But the, the, the first thing that you want to open is the fucking gym and nail salon and movie theater. Like, that's, that's the priority of what needs to be open. Even if they open... Let, let's think about this. Even if they open the movie theater, guys, Marvel and Disney, which make up probably about, and I'm, I'm guesstimating, but I think I'm close, they make up about 60 to 70% of the box office. They've all pushed their movies back to either late in the year or in 2021. What fucking movies is you going to see at the movie theater? Because the damn show ain't Mulan, bitch. It ain't Black Widow. It ain't Wonder Woman. It ain't James Bond. It's none of the shit that's popping. So what movie theater is you going to sit up in? You have doctors and nurses 
going out and doing protests to keep dummies from doing protests about wanting to reopen shit because they watching people die every goddamn day. Okay? And then the whole complaint about we need people working, we have money. Let me tell you something, and I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I know how to fucking add, okay? For all of these companies, Shake Shack, Roof Chris, Pot Belly, first off, you're not paying your people top dollar. You're paying a minimum wage any, anyway. So I could see if you, I, I could even possibly, and I still couldn't see it, see if you were paying these people these ama amazing salaries, but in most cases, Shake Shack, Pot Belly, y'all playing minimum wage. Y'all could really afford to pay your employees for the next few months and still be in the black. But yet and still, and I'm preaching tonight, I didn't mean to preach, but we haven't had a good preach in a while. Yet and still, you borrowed money from the government that you did not need. Okay? Taking that money from these small businesses who are now really forced to close. I saw a young man in, in D.C., some people was like, oh, this restaurant was okay. Some people was like, ah, oh, it was, it was all right. It wasn't bad. Even still, you go to Chipotle and their customer service ain't been shit for a minute. You still go. So I don't want to hear that. Well, he should have closed anyway. The reality is, the fact is, it's a small business who should have access to these monies. But you know why they can't get it or why it's gone already? You know why? Because Shake Shack wants to borrow $10 million. Ruth Chris wants twenty million. Okay, they want they they want money. Pot Belly wants money. Okay, so they can. Uh, and the thing is, um, Shake Shack more than a hundred million. Okay. So, what was the 10? My thing is, if you made 100 million, that's what you used to bring it in. What the fuck was 10 million going to do for you? And Sandra pointed out, that's a good point. They said each restaurant is a small business. Technically, that's true, but cut the shit. They're bringing in all of this, all of this money. And that money's not going to the places or the people that it really should have went to. Because I don't want to say who it was intended to. Because with this administration, they roll out shit. And it's always a backdoor to it. So I can't even say intended to. You know? Um, but I think that it's crazy. Because here's the thing. If me or you get fired today or tomorrow... And we can't pay our rent, we can't pay our utilities, cable, phone, sewer. Guess what they say to us? As a responsible adult, you should have at least two months worth of savings for your living expenses. That's what they tell American citizens. When you go to unemployment and they look at you like you done killed five people. That's what they tell you. But you can't tell Shake Shack that. Shake Shack needs $10 million. Ruth Chris needs $20 million. And they definitely got 20 months worth of rent and expenses. And let's be clear here, there's some kind of way that they're going to write all of that shit off that they spend on their taxes any goddamn way when they go to file. I'm not a tax expert, but I'm sure they're going to figure out some kind of way to get out of that shit and get that money back anyway. So they actually double dipping, in my opinion. All right. 
Now, the thing is, I guess the heat got too hot in the kitchen. Shake Shack gives the money back. Okay, Shake Shack. Shake Shack, like, look. Bitch, we tried it. We got caught. The money ran out. We ain't, we thought it was going to be a free for all. He had taken $10 million. We don't want no smoke. Shake Shack wants you to come back. Now, Ruth Chris waited a while, but Ruth Chris giving their money back. They giving back their $20 million. Okay? You gave the money back, but it's not about you giving the money back. You gave the money back because you got bad press. You didn't give the money back because you had a sudden change of heart. Okay. You didn't give the money back because you found other sources of income. You gave the money back because you got bad press. That's what that was about. And guess what, Toya? Harvard took some money out. They took out a loan. Let's not forget Harvard. Thank you for reminding me, Toya. Y'all got a $40 billion endowment. Not million, billion. And it, it goes back to a point that a good friend of mine, Dominique Morgan, um, I've known him from years. He's on Facebook. Look him up. And he did a live video that I shared. And he said, he, he works for nonprofits. And he says, you know, rich people, you know, he, he made a point about people judging people for getting stimulus checks. Like, oh, I, my rent's paid. I don't need a stimulus. Are you so happy you got a stimulus? And he made a very valid point. He said, I work with rich people all day who have the money to feed several nations. They're not going to turn down that $1,200. They're going to take it. And they're, even if they don't need it, they're going to invest it in their communities, invest it in their family. They're going to give it to somebody in their circle that could use it. But they're not going to turn it down. And they ain't going to say that they don't want it either. Okay? And I thought he had a great point. But for some reason, we're judging people because they was happy about getting their $1,200 check. Okay, and I thought he I thought he made a valid point, and his point is proven in shit like this. And and I think I think it's I think it's sad. I think it's very telling of where we are as um people and they loans grants. I'm sorry if my verbiage may be off, but either way, they still took the money. And I think that it's very telling of where we are as a country. I think that America, and, and this is where I get a little deep, we, we unpack it a little bit. I think America is due for a real conversation. Because the coronavirus has not done anything but further exploit how much of a train wreck this country has become. I don't know if it's the straw that broke the camel's back. I can't say that yet. But we're getting there. And as America, as the country, I think when I, and here's where, where a little history lesson comes into play. And this is, these are my thoughts right now. This is not facts. I'm not reading anything. But when you look at the great empires of the world, Rome, Egypt, even how the Native Americans existed here before, you know, shit went left for them when Columbus and crew came over. I think America was a science experiment. Okay? You have... All of these people from all different walks of life crammed into one space, one country. 
living under a lie because the constitution that they're living under is a lie because it wasn't written with every citizen in mind. And now, fast forward four or five hundred years later, the lie has bubbled over. This great melting pot, Lady Liberty welcoming immigrants to Ellis Island and all of that, you know, all that should have did. Okay? And you know what's so crazy to me? And when we talk about prejudice, racism, you know, xenophobia, things like that, you know, we automatically think of the South. Donald Trump is from New York. Okay? Donald Trump is from New York. He's a New Yorker. Racism, prejudice, xenophobia has no region. That shit is like a state of mind. You know what I'm saying? And I think that now it's worse because of the internet. Because now we're forced to deal with it. And here's what's happening. Some people are dealing with it and saying, damn, that's fucked up. It's a mirror for them. But then some people are living in it. They're saying, you know what? Fuck it. This is who I am. This is who we are. We don't want you here. You know, I think that We have a lot to do, a lot to cover, and it's going to be interesting to see where we go from here. Now, on the flip side of that is, keep in mind, we're in an election year. We're in an election year. And I think this couldn't have come at a worse time than in the election year. But it's two different ways you can look at this, guys. It's two, it's two, two ways. I'm going to break down what I think about this. First off, Joe Biden, and, and we're on the internet a lot. I'm on the internet a lot, okay? I don't feel like Joe Biden is really maximizing this moment. And I'm not nitpicking here. This is really... If one of his people happen to see this, because I know some of these Washington folks and um, political people, they do actually watch these cabinet meetings on YouTube. And if you're watching, I'm going to give you this for free. You need to step up his viral campaign. Nobody gives a fuck if Al Gore endorses him. Maybe people that was already going to vote for him. I know the Sanders camp doesn't. Nobody gives a fuck that Al Gore endorsed Joe Biden. That's par for the course. He needs to be doing a strong, a strong, and I posted this on Facebook, online campaign. He needs to be going live. He needs to be doing shit that I'm doing, this shit that I'm doing right here. Not per se this, not in front of the Power Ranger wall in a holographic do-rag. But he needs to be talking to people. Okay, he needs to be checking in on folks. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing a, he could be doing this. I'm doing a live chat for the state of Maryland today. All of my Maryland folks or all of my Wisconsin folks this week. I'm going live in Wisconsin. And talk about the local issues in that area. You can have somebody research that shit. Just have them research what is fucked up in Merlin. Have them brief you on it. Even if you don't got a full understanding, have them brief you on it. How do you feel your government is treating you? How do you feel your state is run? Have us, I just want to know what's going on in the country. Do that. After you move, taco, move. I'm sorry, I have a cat. Um... 
Do that for each state. Okay? Also, you need to figure out a way to associate yourself with some of these mayors and governors who are killing it right now. You need to be friends with Cuomo. Big time. You need to, you know, Hogan's a Republican our mayor here in Merlin, but he not going to turn down you saying, hey, what's up? You need to be friends or say hi, hey, Chicago, Mayor Lightfoot. You need to be, you need to talk to people. And you're not doing it. This idle time while the country, you have the country at a standstill. They can't go nowhere. It's a lot of noise that's filtered out right now. Where you could be taking advantage of that time and really making an impact. Learn from some of these celebrities. And that doesn't mean just showing up in a D-nice Instagram comments because he's DJing with 100,000 people. That's not outreach. You need to adapt. You need to, and if you have young people working on your campaign, shame on them. Because you're not doing your job. If you're a, a, a millennial, a 20-something, or someone who is of the moment and understands technology, and you don't have your candidate in front of the public, even if it's for 5 or 10 minutes a day, you are not doing your job. And quite frankly, you need to be fired from the campaign. And that's all I'm going to say about Joe Biden. Because, Joe, you're going to be the nominee. So I'm going to be really hard on you now. You applied for the job. You thought you wasn't going to get it after a while. And then you ended up getting it. So now that you have the job, I need to see results. Because if you think that people are just going to magically show up, in November, and check the box with your name on it just because you blew. I got something. I got a cake baking for your ass. Okay? It's not going to happen. Obama. Somebody said they was right in the comments. Rhino for Obama. That Obama legacy shit, that'll work with the older people, older black voters. But guess who died from coronavirus? And that might be a stretch, but I'm just saying. The people that's riding off of that Obama, that goes with that Obama train is a lot of older black folks, a lot of older black voters. Guess what? Who, who's dying from coronavirus? We just talked about the numbers a couple of meetings ago. Nobody, I'm going to be very blunt and I don't want nobody to take this the wrong way. But I got to say it because we got to move forward and we got to get this fucker out of the White House. Don't nobody give a fuck. That you was the vice president with Obama. That shit was a couple was a couple terms ago, bitch. Don't nobody care. Nobody gives a shit. Okay? Nobody gives a fuck that you're friends with Al Gore. Nobody gives a shit. That shit was last year, bitch. We want to know what the fuck is going on now. And I want you to vote for Biden, Ruth. I'm not saying don't vote for Biden. Be clear. Please vote for Biden. But we have to call a spade a spade. Like, if, if I, we, we have to do this 
so that Biden wakes up and does this. That's all I'm saying. Definitely vote for him. My concern is not the people in this group voting for Biden. Because for most of you, that's what you're going to do. But there are a lot of people who also watch these videos who don't like me. And they leave really nasty comments on YouTube. They call me fat ass, porch monkey, big lips, faggot, all kinds of goddamn names. Those are the people that I want to watch this video, want to watch this video and say, well, the fat bitch is loud, but he may have a fucking point. I'm not concerned right now about the people that we know is going to vote for him. I'm concerned about those kids that were invested in Bernie, those Bernie Sanders voters, who he's not talking to, who he could be talking to via social media right now. Okay? That's who... I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about that voter who's tired of Trump, but maybe they just don't see enough of him, of, of, of Biden. That's who I'm concerned about. And saying all Dems need to vote for Biden is not enough. That's not campaigning. Because Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by 3 million votes last election and the bitch still lost. Because she lost in key states. We need to focus on voter turnout in key states. States that you need. States where you didn't perform well the last time. States with a voter demo that's dormant. That may show may show up for you. That's what I'm saying. Um, but I'm not gonna preach all night. I gotta go watch Mrs. America because I was too tired last night to watch it. I watched little fires everywhere. I tell you that finale they sent me, y'all. I I just I just can't like. They sent me with that finale. Okay, I I just. They sent me. But anyway, um, if you are watching this on YouTube, as always, click the notification bell at the top. Follow me on social media at Dapper Dan Midas. All my word. That's on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I'm going to be doing something fun on Saturday. Me and uh, our dear friend, uh, Chaotic Couture, we're going to do one of those IG live battles. And we're going to do Nicki Minaj versus Little Cam. Of course, I'm representing Queen B, Team Queen B. So that should be a lot of fun. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. But um, with that being said, um, you guys do have a great evening. I know we preached a lot today. We, we really had a conversation more than researching a bunch of data. But um, be safe. Um, happy Friday, because tomorrow's Friday. Work from home, bitch, is tough. I feel like <sighs> I'm finally ready to get off of work from home. But, uh, yeah, make sure you log into that um, Instagram battle Saturday night, 8 p.m. on my Instagram, at Dapper Dan Midas. Um, Lil' Kim versus Nicki Minaj is going to be fine. It's going to be a key, and I'm going to be ready for them. Um, until then, you guys have a great evening. Be safe. I love you dearly, even though my mouth is terrible and we may not always see eye to eye, but know that we are human beings and you are family to me and I love you. Um, so y'all be safe. Peace and love.